All right, so yesterday we left off, we were talking about exhaust gas temperature. We're going to talk a lot about exhaust gas temperature as we move forward here. Uh, but according to my notes, the very next thing to talk about is power ratios. power ratios, which we really started to cover yesterday, and it's this slide right here. So this one is off the IO550. As I mentioned, it is a very specific uh, set RPM and manifold pressure setting. And last class I said, hey, if you don't understand the correlation between manifold and RPM and why I can have, I can adjust manifold and I can adjust RPM separately that you need to see me for some simulator time. And so a few people did. So I assume everybody else understands at this point that I can adjust manifold pressure and I can adjust RPM and how I do that. So, all right, uh, let's see. We have the EGT line, which we already looked at, right? Which is up here. Let's see. Laser. EGT line. Why does the EGT go like this and peak there and come down? What does that mean? Your mixture ratio adding between lean and rich. Okay, this is my mixture. So we're going to be, when we take off and we're flying, we're probably going to be somewhere over on this end right here. When I set up the airplane for cruise, it's probably going to be somewhere over here. It's pretty rich all by itself. Carburetors run pretty rich. Especially as we go up in an altitude, the carburetor doesn't know that we've gone up in altitude, so it's going to run exceedingly rich because we're getting thinner and thinner air, and the carburetor keeps dumping the same amount of fuel in because there's not a computer to tell it otherwise. The computer's up here. So it's going to be running really rich. So I pull which knob? What color? Red. Red, <clears throat> red knobs. I pull it back. I'm going to watch my EGT go up, 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 until it gets to a peak, and if I keep pulling it, it's going to go... Down, down, down. What happens when it gets to about here? You're going to come out. Engine dies. <laughs> so how do you start the engine back up? Push the knob back in a little bit, all right? So also it'll start running rough. So it will not run rough on the rich side, but we're going to get up to here, and as we start going back down here, it's going to start getting rough. And some books call it a lean misfire. It's not a lean misfire. They're implying that you're getting so lean that now the engine is starting to misfire as it goes around, but it doesn't do that. It just, it just doesn't. What happens is you start producing different, because of the uneven mixture in some engines, that some engines are actually producing more power than others. Some are getting close to dying. They're not producing a lot of power. Some are. So now you got an engine that's producing, it's got a mix of uh, power production off the cylinders. And that represents itself as roughness. So a lot of uh, POHs will tell you pull the mixture all the way back until it runs rough and then enriching it until it just smooths out. Now, if I do that in my engine, that puts me right about here. So I can do it by the seat of my pants. I reach over, I grab the red knob and I pull it back pretty aggressively. And then I start and then I'll start twisting it because it's veneer and it'll start to get a little rough. And if I have people who haven't flown with me before, I'll even warn them like, look, I'm going to adjust the mixture. It could get a little rough. It's not a big deal. I'm making it do that. So don't panic. And then I'll push it in until it just smooths out. Just kind of feel it, feel it ah, right there. Then I'll look over at my EGT and it's right where I think it's going to be. It's right about 1420 usually. So um, then I tried it with watching my gauges, pull, you know, watch the gauge and pull it, watch it get more and more and more, more and then start on the backside, then enriching it, just, you know, bring it right and then same thing. So it's funny how the POH tells you exactly what to do is exactly what the numbers work out to be. So somebody's pretty smart to do that. But anyway, um, so we have, let's see, EGT, we talked about that. We know what the CHT, what does CHT stand for? Silverhead temp. Silver temp. All right. Uh, BHP is what? Great horsepower. Great horsepower. Okay. Um, I'm, not going to write all this, and you can write it. So it's one. One was like item one was EGT. We talked about that. Two was CHT. Three is the brake horsepower, and uh, four is a brake specific fuel consumption, which is like what? Uh, Miles per gallon. Okay. Uh, lower is better. Lower is better. Brake horsepower. Higher is better. Cylinder head temp. 
lower is better, EGT. I don't want to say higher is better. It's just, it is what it is. You know, I suppose if I could get my exhaust valve temperatures really low, that would be great, but it doesn't work that way. Um, let me see. So uh, we had one, we talked about EGT. Two, we talked about CHT. Three was the brake horsepower line, BHP, which is brake horsepower, which we talked about in the last class I had. And then we have the brake specific BSFC, brake specific fuel consumption. And that is like, it's like miles per gallon. It's not, we, if it was, we'd just call it miles per gallon. A term to use to indicate economical operation of an engine, like MPG, lower is better. Uh, it is the ratio of pounds, R -A -T -I, ratio of pounds of fuel burned burned uh, per hour per, per hour well it's actually pounds of fuel burned per hour divided by a horsepower um, sometimes you will actually see this as just uh, specific same as same as specific um, SPC, I just put SPC, specific something, I forget what it was. I think that was a misprint. I think that's supposed to be specific fuel consumption is what I think I meant to write, but it came out SPC, thank you, word. Uh, okay, so for an example, I looked up a Cessna 150. Why I chose that, I don't know. Uh, how many horsepower is Cessna 150? What's that? <laughs> Be a good guess, but no. <laughs> How's a Continental O200? All right, 100 horsepower. <laughs> Where does it produce 100 horsepower? Sea level, standard day. All right, so let's see. The POH, which POH stands for? Pilot operating, handbook. Pilot operating handbook shows 5.8 gallons per hour at 77% BHP. And unfortunately, when I learned to fly airplanes, I learned in a Cessna 140, which is like a 150, but smaller and has a tailwheel. It has a C-85 in it. And... The person who taught me to fly the plane is his plane, so he flew it the way he wanted it to. And, and he had, you know, we, you go max power to take off, then as soon as we took off, you pull the power back to like 2350, 2200. And you pull it back and go, see how, like, right there, it sounds like better. You know, that's, you know, and I'm kind of thinking, okay, yeah, it's like 75%, I guess, of the, of, of the red line. It kind of makes sense, you know, just math in your head real quick. And so, okay, yeah, we're flying at 77% power because wide open throttle will be full power and this will be there so that's what you want and it wasn't until like years later when I started to think about it and, and I should have put it all together at first but um, we have that formula that we did plank P-L-A-N-K which was for what? Horsepower. Horsepower and <laughs> the thing is what was the P? <coughs> Pressure and length of the stroke, area of the piston, uh, the uh, number of cylinders, and N was RPM, number of power pulses divided by two. So I couldn't change the length of the stroke, can't change the area of the piston, I couldn't change the area of the, uh, the number of cylinders, but I can change the pressure and I can change the RPM, right? Yeah. Or they're, they're variables. So as I go up in altitude, what happens to the pressure? So if I take off right now and I go to 100 feet and I pull up, 
back to 75% power, right? But then I start climbing. What's my power really doing as I go up? It's going down. So how can I get my power back? Increase RPM. So you get to an altitude where at 100% RPM, you're only at like 60% or 50% power anyway. And this is like something that didn't correlate with me for a very long time until I started thinking about it. I'm like, wait, wait a minute. You don't just fly at that RPM. As you go up and higher in a fixed pitch prop, what do you do? You add more RPM. So I, if I get to a certain altitude, let's say I take a Cessna 150 and I go up to, I don't have the book in front of me, but I go to 10,000 feet. If I go to wide open throttle, am I at 100% RPM? No. I'm at 100% of the RPM it has available, I would, or a horsepower it has available. That's it, but it's not 100% of the power. It's a lot less. I, I could be flying at 50% power wide open. So you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's you as the pilot have to think about that and manage that. It's like as you go up, you get to change the engine to give you the horsepower that you want. Same thing with my airplane with the fixed pitch prop. If I take off and I pull it back to 21 inches of manifold pressure and I go 2100 RPM and it's like 65% power and then I decide to start a slow climb all the way from here to Las Vegas, you know, by the time I get somewhere in Nevada and I'm, you know, 12,000 feet, am I still at the same horsepower? Oh, heck no. I've dropped it to almost nothing. So if we read the chart in my airplane, I'm going to start increasing manifold pressure till the point where it doesn't go up anymore, and then I'll start increasing the RPM. So anyway, so the POH shows 5.8 gallons, 77% brake horsepower. I don't know what uh, RPM that is. It depends on the altitude. Um, let's see. So 5.8 uh, times how many gallons? So it's pounds of fuel burned per hour. It burned 5.8 gallons. How many pounds is that? Times what? To get pounds? Six. So six. It was 6.3 for the G100UL. So 5.8 times six um, at 77%. 77% of what? 100, which is 0 0.77. So that it's 340 or 34.8 divided by 77. So my brake specific fuel consumption is 0.45. Uh, what do you do with that number? Well, now you know it. So this guy's always on his phone. I swear. Right. Are you? Are you right. Is it your Tamagotchi? You no, playing? I know. It's a pager. <laughs> you drug dealer? <laughs> <laughs> okay, and we have talked a little bit about this. We're talking about more stoichiometric. Stoichiometric does not necessarily produce the highest power. What does stoichiometric mean? Perfect. Theoretically, Theoretically perfect chemical burn. Okay. Why does it not necessarily produce the best power? Because we live in a real world. All right. This is due to imperfect fuel air mixes. And for fuel air, I'm just going to do F A, fuel air, or... FA, either which way, uppercase, lowercase. Fuel air mixes in the cylinder. In the cylinder. Uh, so we have imperfect mixture. All of the fuel is not mixing perfectly with all the air. So this spot over here might be a little rich. This spot over here is a little lean. This spot in the middle is just perfect. So it doesn't work out right. Um, that And partially because of incomplete scavenging of exhaust gases, which means we still have some exhaust gases floating around there. It wasn't, didn't perfectly get rid of them all. Um, the most power is produced with a mix of about maybe ooh, about 12 to 1. What was stoichiometric? 
15 to 1. You guys are awesome. 15 parts what? Air. Okay, so uh, is 12 to 1 richer or leaner? Richer. 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 So it takes a little more, little more fuel in there. Um, but 12 to 1, which is richer than stoichiometric. Um, but that depends upon the engine. So don't say that, oh, best power is 12 to 1. We know it for a fact. It's not. It just depends. So it's some range between, I don't know, I'm just make up a number, um, 16 to 1 to 12 to 1, somewhere in that neighborhood. Maybe a little richer, maybe a little leaner. You know, I don't know. Uh, okay, stoichiometric, what are we at here? All right, so looking back at our chart, we have our peak EGT line. I'm, and I put the red on here. This is me. I might even put the star. That's how cool I am. So max EGT. Um, this is the maximum EGT possible at this power setting. Who decides what the max EGT is? God. Your engine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. God, the engine. Right? It's, it just is what it is. The max EGT is whatever it is when you pull that mixture back till it peaks. Right, and what are the variables in in the in the actual temperature? What's the number one variable in what the mat when that's going to read? Okay. Asking. All right, so so uh, you have the exact same airplane I have, right? And so I say, well, my EGT at peak for number three cylinders oh, is always fourteen twenty, and you're like, dude, mine's always fifteen twenty. Should I worry? Wait a second. That's very first question I'd be is. Where'd you put your probe? Your probe's a little bit, is an eighth inch higher than mine. There you go, that's all it is. So, um, and it's irrelevant. The only thing that matters is if it's turbine inlet temperature, then it matters. Then you, then you have a red line. Otherwise, it just is what it is. All right, so uh, the EGT is max EGT possible at this power setting for this engine where this probe is put in this particular engine. It all matters, right? So I couldn't use this, this actual line if I changed EGT probes and put them in a different place. Like for example, my airplane came with the single EGT probe thing that I showed you the, the one without the numbers. There, this right here, that, that was in my airplane. It was an option for my airplane, um, but that's all I had. And so then I put in this system and my probe is in a different spot. With the single one, it was like, it was way down. I think I put it way back up because it's where it's supposed to be according to the instructions. But anyway, so that changes. So um, is that the best power? No. No, it's not. So where's my best power? Blue line. Blue line, which is going to be right about there, right? So where are my, where are my notes? Increasing the fuel, richer move to the right. Okay, we talked about that. This way is richer, pushing in the red knob. That way is leaner. Um, Best power is blue. Okay, so we have peak EGT. Best power is blue. Kind of explained all this. Just wondering what my thoughts were. Max. Uh, hey, what's my max uh, brake horse power? Max power? On this, on this chart. Oh. What is it? What's the number? Well, I was hoping to say, oh, it's the blue line. So I put the blue line there. So our blue line, okay, blue line is, I'm just looking at my notes. I, like, I went over this, but I was wondering if I had anything interesting. Uh, max, uh, best, best, so best power. I'm going to write this because these are terms that we kind of want to know. So we have. Uh, oh, yeah. If I ask you the same question twice on an oral, there's at least a 25% chance. I forgot I just asked you that question. <laughs> 75% chance. I just want to see if you'll answer it the same way. I'm like, I'm like, oh, shit, it's going to have to have a different answer, but I think it's like I just, you know what I mean? I like, yeah. think or you know? All right, so we have the... <laughs> so everybody's clear if I say peak EGT, you know what I mean, right? Yes. It is, it's, it's the hottest exhaust test temperature I could get by pulling the mixture back. 
All right, so uh, it's not the best power. So, um, and then we have okay, A, B, C, D, and then we'll talk about best power. Best power, um, that is my max brake horsepower. That's the best I can get out of this engine. Uh, the mixture that gives the best power. So mixture that gives best or most power. Uh, i hesitant to say this, but it's also another way of saying it is most miles per hour. <laughs> Not miles per gallon, miles per hour. And that is EGT is low and CHT is high. So I want to go fast, get there quick, don't care about my fuel. I'm going to go to best power. But uh, what is my ma major concern? CHTs. You better watch those CHTs. It's, it's harsh. And that's going to be my best power. Um, brake specific fuel consumption. Well, you're just at best power. So what happens after that? If I enrich in it beyond this blue line and make it richer, what happens? Temps are going to go down a little bit. You're also not getting any increase in brake horsepower. So I'm using fuel to cool the engine. I'm what? You're not getting any increase. You're actually getting a small decrease in horsepower. You're actually going to start losing horsepower and fuel burning more fuel. All right. So you want to, okay. So best power we see. Um, how many degrees rich a peak is that? I want a pin. So this right here is peak. So peak is going to be right in here. So that's 1550 right there. That's 15. So that's what, 1525? Mm -hmm. And this right here is, oops, I got this one. 1475. So 1450. So we want 1475. So that's about 50 degrees. 50 degrees. R -O, and that would be ROP. ROP. So that is about, it's going to depend on the engine. 50 degrees ROP, rich of peak. This is an important point because, okay, so I don't ever want to, I hate the term old wife's tale because it's just so, was it misogynistic, sexist? And then there's a joke in the about, well, because wives never had airplanes, but okay. <laughs> so it's a myth. So it's the most, it's one of the most common myths right there of, of, uh, that I hear all the time out in the field. It is, if you want to save your engine, fuel is cheaper than, I said the other day, fuel is cheaper than overhaul, so go to peak. Oh, peak, that sounds bad for the exhaust valves. Go to peak and we're gonna enrich it by 50 degrees. That way we're cooling the exhaust valve. And you know, now we're being smart. And we did what? <laughs> Brought those cylinder head temps up. All right, so I don't know. If you ask me, exhaust valves are cheaper than whole cylinder, but that's not really the point. So uh, I just wanna dispel that myth that I, I'm not a personally, and when I was at Lycoming School, I thought fists were gonna start flying. Uh, it was like, whoa. I mean, I just like, I was glad I was not involved in that. What's the Simpsons thing where, you know, Homer just kind of goes yeah, back at the moon. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was being bad. I'm like, I have no part of this one. Uh, but it was, you know, one guy who I would have suggested is easily the smartest guy in that room and the other surrounding room saying <laughs> lean of peak is absolutely acceptable. <coughs> Excuse me, and the guy from Light come and go, no, it's not. That's exactly how you ruin your engine. But anyway, you can decide for yourself. That's going to put us in the right up here where the cylinders are very, very hot. Uh, what would be worse than 25 degrees, rich a peak? Uh, less than About 25 yeah, degrees? Yeah, <laughs> I think 25 would be even worse. So 25 to 50 is terrible. Why it's terrible. Richard peak, Richard peak, I mean. No, I will, um, 
So why do they say Lena Peak is bad? Yeah, why is that bad? Why would that be bad? It's just this theory but that, that um, okay, you take this chart and you throw it away. Okay. And then you just say, okay, let's think this through. Um, fuel equals cooling. Okay, and this is what it's, how about that theory goes. Fuel equals cooling. We add fuel to our engines when we go to wide open throttle because more fuel is good at wide open throttle, right? And I believe that's true. Right, and we already know because it, it moves the pre peak pressure point a little bit later. Uh, we need so that helps with cooling. Um, so that brings the temperatures down, exhaust gas temperature, cylinder head temp, detonation protection. So a lot of fuel is good. So if a lot of fuel is good, then well, no, then less is bad. So if more is good, then less is bad. That that's just how that has to work. So if less is bad then anytime we go to peak, peak is bad because we've removed fuel. What if we remove a little bit more fuel? Well, that's worse. That's how that theory goes. But if you look at the chart, bring the chart back and go, okay, well, let's just talk about this. Uh, go down. We have peak. All right, so if I'm at peak, the only thing on here that's really not happy is the exhaust valve is pretty hot, but if it can handle it, then it handles it. Um, what is the cylinder doing at peak? It's reasonably cool. All right. Uh, okay, now I go to lean of peak. So here I got the green line right here. Uh, best economy is what this one's called. So best economy. And so what has happened to my cylinder head temp? It is way down. Well, what happened to my horsepower? It did go down, but what happened to my... You're using way less fuel. You're using way less fuel. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like you're climbing and doing the loop. Right. And so that's in cruise. So it's just they have this theory that lean of peak is really, really bad. It's And it's just not. Cool is cool. Uh, you know, I you just look at this right here, the CHT line. Where do you want to be? I want to be like right here, right over here. Oh, this is really good. You want to be here? Uh, want to be here? You want to be here? I want to be right there. That'd be great. So if you can, then you do it. So um, let's see. Best power mixture. Did I write that? Uh, next best time power. We, next time we ever hear that, we'll be like, oh, really? Where's your chart for that? Yeah. Um, there, um, I don't know if I get into this. I think I do, but all right. So best power, that's right there. That's about 50 degrees rich of peak. Um, again, high cylinder head temp. Let me see. E, best economy. I will say that I used to think that this was all about cheap pilots. You're just too cheap to burn the fuel. But then I realized later on when I started really caring about it that, well, I'm, I'm dumping a lot of lead in the engine. I'm creating lead deposits and that's going to cause problems later on. So I'd rather not. So it becomes more about that. Um, if I was personally that worried about fuel consumption, I wouldn't have the engine I have, I don't think. Um, lowest or best uh, brake specific fuel consumption. So best economy is going to have the lowest lowest uh, power output. Uh, we're going to have very low EGT and low CHT. And it's about, in this chart at least, about 60 degrees um, Lean of peak, that's L-O-P, lean of peak. No, I can't do that in my airplane because of the <coughs> uneven fuel distribution. But that's our best economy, which we already looked at. All right, so understanding EGT. <coughs> All right, first thing we have to understand is EGT can be manipulated at any power setting. Doesn't matter if you have a fixed pitch prop, constant speed prop, fuel injection, carbureted, pressure carb, doesn't matter. Any RPM, any power setting, you can manipulate, move the EGT up and down 
by moving the red knob. The only exception that would be is if you're at a very low power setting, sometimes EGT doesn't even start to register. It's, it's off the chart too low. And so you wouldn't be able to manipulate it just because the gauge doesn't go that far. Um, all right, so this is, I think, a lot of redundancy. From peak, you can enrich in the mixture and drop the EGT until you're at full rich. Yeah, from peak, you can enrich in, go full rich. From peak, you can lean until the engine dies from lack of fuel. I need to write that. Everybody's got that. I think we covered it. Okay. Um, well, I'll just abbreviate it. So we talked about peak. Um, then enriching. To drop EGT from, from peak or from peak lean to drop EGT. <coughs> that chart that you had, where did you get that? What's that called? This one? Yeah. That's out of the uh, 550 POH, but this one I got from a publication. I don't remember which publication I got it from. It wasn't actually like the 550 POH. It was in a publication where they were talking specifically about EGT and running Lena Peak and all that stuff. Okay. Can you put it on Davis? Or, or? Yeah. I didn't get it. I want it on I think it is. There's a lot of additional reading I put in there. I think I put it all in there. So I think it's already there. You said you know specifically like how many degrees of, like, like when you're pulling the mixture, it's not like it's going to tell you like, oh, now you're 50% or 50 degrees rich of peak, right? No, you have to find the peak yourself. So you just know. Right. Well, if you know your engine really well, you'll know where peak's going to be, but you still have to find it yourself. Yeah. So. No, not on the ground, really. But as a mechanic, what I would do, do, actually do, is when I start the airplane on the ground, I'm going to reach over and I'm pull the mixture way back. I don't want it running rich on the ground. Why don't I want it running rich on the ground? Lead fouling. Right? I don't want a bunch of lead fouling, so I'm going to pull it way back. Uh, all right, turning off one mag. Will, we're talking about EGT. What do you think it's going to do? Turning off one mag will, where am I at here? Increase. EGT. Why? With one mag dead, the flame front takes... Longer to burn. The longer burn means less power is extracted and there is more waste or fuel is still burning when the exhaust valve opens, which, so uh, I like the first part better. So with one mag dead, flame front takes longer. So anytime we, well, no, I shouldn't say that. So flame front takes longer um, to burn, to burn. Um, Less power is extracted. Less power is extracted. And more heat is wasted out of exhaust. Okay, I think I have way too much here. So I'm not going to write all this because maybe this is more of a pilot class than it is a mechanics class. But I'm going to talk about it just so you get the idea and you can write whatever notes you want to write. Maybe I'll write something. As it, otherwise, it's going to just drag on and on. All right, so how would I find uh, peak power, best power? All right, so I'm in, the, I'm in the air, I'm flying, and let's tell you, I'll do this. Seven, at least put the main points. Finding peak power. Or best power. 
chest power. With a fixed pitch prop, it's real easy. You do it on the ground, you do it in the air. So you're in the air, you're flying along, you just stabilized, you're not climbing or descending. Stabilize, put the uh, prop, not the prop control, put the RPM where you want it, because all you got is the RPM and the red, right? You got the black and the red, that's all you got. So you put the black where you want it, let's say we stick it at 2400 RPM. Now start leaning out and watch your RPM. It starts climbing, why does it start climbing? More power. So climbs 50 RPM and it starts to go back the other way. What do you do? Pull it Push it back in a little bit until it goes up. So you gain 50 RPM. There you go. Best power. Um, let me see. Constant speed. You, can I do that with constant speed? So I set, set it for, set my RPM for 2100 RPM and I pull the mixture and I pull the mixture and I pull the mixture. What's going to eventually happen? It's gonna, it's gonna die. The engine will die. The prop will see it going because I'm going. Then it'll start coming down, All right? So I can't do that, right? Because as I manipulate the power on a fixed pitch prop, the pitch is gonna change on the prop to keep it at the RPM I told it to stay at. So I watch the airspeed. So when the airspeed peaks out, there you are. So you gotta do it real slow and watch it. Um, no, because it's not the peak cylinder head temp. What you would yourself for that? Yeah, is it? Let me see. So best power. Yeah, you could watch your cylinder head temp, and when it starts baking really well, then you have to go slow. It takes a while for it to heat up. Yeah. So you're saying with the fixed fix, uh, prop, you just set your RPM where you want it, and then adjust mixture uh, and watch the airspeed pretty much? Now with the fixed pitch prop, or, you're going to watch uh, RPM. Uh, constant speed, sorry. Yes, constant speed. But you would climb, wouldn't you? So no. You, no. If you, if you not if you kept it. Not if you held your altitude. But that okay. So you're, you're, you have to hold altitude. Too. Yeah. That's what he said. Oh, I didn't hear what he said. Yeah. Don't climb. Don't descend. Yeah. Oh, you I do that. <laughs> so it could, it's because you're on your pager. Yeah. So you're just changing which gear you have. The dang Nintendo. Depending on which airplane you have. Okay, leaning in flight. Let's see, leaning in flight is done for many reasons. Why do we lean in flight? All right, so conserve fuel. Um, keep engine running smoothly. Although, I don't know if I agree with that one. It runs pretty smooth when it's really rich. So it doesn't run rough. Um, Keeps cleaner. That's, I think, the biggest one there. No deposits on the valves. Um, oh, I got that one. I wrote it. Excessive lead contamination. So cleaner. Lead contamination. Um, well, I'm going to say more power. I put conserve fuel, keep engine running smooth, which I don't agree with, prevent running an overly rich mixture as the aircraft climbs. Well, that's true, but it's like, why do I not want an overly rich mixture as the aircraft climbs? And that would be because I'm going to waste fuel. I'm going to add lead deposits. I'm going to lose power. So um, let's see. Leaning must be done appropriately to prevent high CHT and detonation. In truth, I'm not even going to write that. There really seems to be a general consensus that once you're below 65% power, there's really not much danger of detonation anymore. And so above 65% power, yeah, I'm pretty careful about how I lean. I keep it pretty rich, keep it excessively rich. I don't really start finding peak EGT and really pulling it back hard into the roughness zone until I'm at a much lower power setting, below 65 in a cruise. So that makes it a little bit hard in flight if you're going to go like from here and I'm going to climb to 14,000 feet. Well, I don't want to run it rich all the way to 14,000 feet. That's just, man, that is really freaking rich. Um, and I'm going to have lose so much power as I get up, you know, past five, 6,000 feet. So you do have to lean it. 
And that's where it's helpful to have a EGT gauge that you know where it should be on a rich, rich run. But yes, Miss Kelly. I have not. So we'll drop anybody who hasn't done it tomorrow. We'll assume yes. they're not here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I guess that's it. Okay. Okay, so trying to keep this without going off into the weeds and you're going, oh my God, what do I care about? Um, again, I think a lot of my notes, I was thinking more pilot. And it'd be great to know as a mechanic, but I'm afraid you'll like forget a lot of this. So, but we do have to have this concern uh, about detonation, right? So we keep talking about detonation. So detonation is, is very important. See, leaning in flight, um, we got that one. Um, leaning is done for many reasons, and appropriately, detonation, we're going to spot detonation. Um, when does detonation happen? Before it's, before it's supposed to. Is that what you're asking? Uh, what parameters? What parameters will, will detonation? Uh, Say it again. Okay, hi. Uh, We'll say high power settings, um, which is going to be um, high cylinder pressure. The ICP, internal cylinder pressure, is high. Um, high cylinder pressures early, peak pressure points, which had to do with richness and lean. So we put those two together. I have high cylinder pressures and the early peak pressure point. If I have an early peak pressure point, but my cylinder pressures are low, it's not a problem. Combine the two, got a lot of pressure in the cylinder, and I bring that peak pressure point in real early, then I'm going to have problems. Where is the earliest peak pressure point? Rich, lean, or peak? Peak. Peak. Remember our, our peak pressure points. Right there, peak pressure point, you can go away. Right here, this is time, increase and decrease. So the shortest amount of time was right here. Flame, it's flame propagation rate. So high rate equals a short time. So right in here is when that peak pressure, the flame front's moving the fastest. And that is what? Best power mixture. All right, so if it's best power mixture, then we can say, where's best power mixture going to be? Best power mixture. Best power mixture is going to be a little bit on this side of the peak. So 50 degrees rich peak. So you have most most chance of detonation. Most chance of detonation. So that's one reason why you also want to leave it. Let me see something if I put this slide in here. So the light only got ah, to there we go. That it's that's what I wanted. Richard, Richard Peak is the place to be. That's where detonation was. That's where detonation, yeah. So what I'm hearing <laughs> is you should run a rich of peak, rich of peak, so light only makes more money on it. Yeah. So there's this, uh, it's called the red fin theory. Um, it's just a different way of writing something. Some people write it in this theory right here, which talks about where is detonation likely to happen. So detonation is likely to happen right in here. And notice that this is drawn backwards. Now rich of peak is on this side and lean is on this side, which is not helpful to keep swapping things back and forth. But where's the most likely, our, our highest chance of detonation is going to be? 
a little bit rich a peak. Um, I don't know what this one here, modified rich, the highly abusive purple zone. That's a name of a band, if you ask me. Um, so this is, yeah, EGT line, CHT line. So right where the CHT peaks out, worst place for detonation. 50 to 25 degrees EGT. So all there, worst chance you can get. Um, but what's not, oh, this is 75% power. So notice how the chart is going to change. So 65% power. We've already got rid of, this is 75% power. I don't like that chart. There, I like this one. All right, so this one is a little bit better because you can see down here at 85% um, power, we have a pretty big danger zone, right? And a lot of it is in rich of peak, all the way up to 225 degrees rich of peak. 80%, uh, but we get down here to 65%, we're starting to lose at 60%, there is no chance of detonation any longer. It's gone away. And so I think that's the big point there. So you can do whatever you want at 60%. It doesn't matter. You can lean it, rich in it, whatever makes you happy. It doesn't matter. But they want you to be rich of peak for the climb and the cruise. And then once you get to your cruise altitude, um, lean for best power, and you're going to be good. Or lean for lean of peak, and you're going to be fine. Cruise, you'll be fine but you stay out of this box. So if you listen to some podcasters, they'll talk about the big pull, which means that if I decided to cruise at this spot right here, and I'm gonna lean very carefully, and so I pull the knob real slow and real slow, what am I doing? And I'm spending all that time in the zone, and that's not good. So um, oh, I usually cruise around this area here, closer to 65, so I do the big pull. So I've got it pretty rich, and I'm going to lean it out. I do a big pull. Just yank it. Just yank it. And so I yank it right through that into about here, and then start, and then, well, ah, probably more into here. Then I pull it a little bit. I get to the peak. Then when I'm in the peak, I'm happy right there. So, uh, so even with all this data, why is it that people still are on like, the rich peak side? A lot of the POHs, old POHs, said to do that. Run at 50 degrees, reach a peak. You know, because it's cooler by 50 degrees. What could be wrong with that? I kind of wonder if some of that stigmatism comes from, like, octane because of the different, like, octane ratings and how cars also run, too. Maybe. All right, so we got that. Talked about that. Yeah, many old POHs instruct pilots to lean 50 degrees, reach a peak. Um, but that's the danger zone. Um, how to lean is quite controversial. Um, let's see, extra fuel. All right, just some funny points out of the POH. Um, so leaning a Cessna 150 in the POH. It says, pull the mixture control out until the engine RPM peaks and begins to fall off. Engine RPM peaks and begins to fall off. Let's see if we can go to, let me see. The chart, oh, let's use this one. Until the engine RPM peaks, that'd be brake horsepower, and starts to fall off. So where am I now? Quite, quite rich a peak. Uh, to peaks peaks and begins to fall off. Then enrich and slightly back to peak RPM. So in the Cessna 150, if I'm running peak RPM, I'm going to be at peak horsepower because it's a fixed pitch prop, right? Mm -hmm. And so what is that going to put me as far as EGT goes? Well, blue line, 75 to 100 degrees rich peak. So that's where the Cessna 150. Um, at 182, uh, at 75% horsepower, at 75% horsepower, do I have to worry about the red fin? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's smaller, but it's there. All right, 75% horsepower, lean to peak EGT. And, and this is a quote. And then enrich in by 50 degrees. So that puts me there, right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we get this from. 
And then it says, operation at peak EGT is only authorized at 65% power or less. You can do whatever you want. Yes, operation on the lean side of EGT is not authorized. Right out of the POH. It, it does, my air probably doesn't run it that way anyway. A lot of people probably don't look at this data. No, or care. Uh, best power mixture. Uh, this is out of the Lycoming. Best power mixture, lean until uh, the TAC. Uh, peaks. So Lightcoming says best power mixture. Lean until the RPM peaks. Well, that makes sense, right? All right. Um, that seems kind of hard in reality. It's the RPM. The RPM seems to kind of stay the same for a long time. It's in your plane. It's really hard to maintain a perfect altitude. Yeah, I know. Like it's a little easier with a plane that's got a nice autopilot in it. You just set it, and now you start messing with everything, and you don't even look out the window. So. Um, if you have a constant speed, you're going to peak uh, until what peaks? Airspeed. airspeed peaks, right? Constant speed will, will lean until it peaks. Uh, Lycoming says that's about 100 degrees rich a peak. Uh, best economy, lean until the engine runs rough. Why is it running rough? It's a power balance issue. Remember, it's not a lean misfire, says me and a lot of the people. Um, lean until the engine runs rough, then increase the mixture until smooth. And that usually puts you at about peak EGT. That's what Lightcoming says. Uh, let's see. We can skip all that. All right. I think kind of hopefully mix that. Um, backfire and afterfire. Get that terminology done right. So where am I at here? Um, uh, we'll just finish up that. So one more thought. Make sure everybody's cool on this. Um, can you run lean of peak? Yes. At what power setting? 6500. According to the engine manufacturers, where do they where do they allow you to run lean of peak? 665. Yeah. Um, let's see. I think I took it out, thankfully, but I'll just tell you because it's not worth writing all this down. There was this, this thing, it was called the, um, the right, so it was W something, something uh, procedure, the right procedure, it was named after the right engine. So during World War II, where we had a lot of piston engines, a lot of pilots had to figure out how to get a lot of miles out of a little bit of fuel. You know, if you've never read the book, is it 30 seconds over Tokyo? Is it 30 seconds? Something over Tokyo. You guys are familiar with the Doolittle Raid? If you're not oh, familiar, yeah, yeah. it's the Doolittle Raid. It was, you know, we, we were gonna go hit Japan with these bombers, uh, B-17s? Uh, no, B-25. 25, thanks, I'm terrible at that one. So they load these land-based aircraft onto a carrier Fun fact, where did these land-based airplanes go to before they were loaded on the carrier? Okay. Right outside our door. Okay. They, they were here. So they put these aircraft on a carrier and they tried to get as close to Japan as they could. And, and, uh, and I'm getting off topic. But anyway, I mean, they had to lean the living crap out of these things. Um, they were not going to make it back to the carrier anyway. So anyway, um, great. They, they, they did it. But uh, it's a great story and it's a long one. So anyway. So a lot of these pilots throughout World War II, they had, had to do some significant leaning. And they had this procedure where they would actually say, pull back the manifold pressure, set the engine RPM, and they would lean it. I forget exactly where. It was like peak or, or lean of peak. They would lean it so much that they would lose power, but they would lean it all the way to that point, and then because they lost power, they wanted to get their power back, so what are the two things you have to deal with? RPM and manifold pressure. They would bring the manifold pressure back up like two or three inches and run it there. And they did it. And these, of course, the people who are disagree with it say, well, yeah, these, plane, these aircraft engines only had to last a couple hundred hours at best before they were shot down, so they didn't care. But I don't know. But uh, I've read some really cool books about getting airplanes that they call on the step. You just, if you can get it in the right you get it fast enough that it would set in this, this, this spot and then you could really lean it and pull the power way back. And I've seen it in my plane, kind of. There's times where I've, recently where I was flying it and I'm like, man, it's like I've got the same power settings I always do, but I'm like 10 knots slower than normal. 
And then sometimes I can just get it right on that step. I'm like, damn, we are really good. We're cooking, you know, in a nice power setting. So anyway, um, but the point I wanted to make there was a lot of them. Um, so uh, Lycoming, Continental, uh, do not want you running Lena Peak. If they do any of them, it's like less than 65% power. All right, um, backfire and afterfire. So I'm kind of on point 10. I skipped a lot of them, but getting back on it. So backfire, backfire, and afterfire. And then, yeah, I think it's time for a break. Let's do a break.